subscribe or I will eat your babies. Speaking of hot, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> as hot as hell. <laughs> as hot as hell. Weird. Absurd. Diverse. Societal views with a pint of humor. This is Giba and Rish. Hi guys, welcome to Giba Rish TV. I'm Rish. <laughs> And give by somewhere here. Yeah. So today, um, this is a special edition of the Rich, and this is a special episode because we're going to discuss a very controversial topic, especially Saiba Yokura COVID 19, and there's a global pandemic. And now we want to highlight what is the position of the church, what is the position of science concerning the global pandemic. So, yeah, today we have Giba. And the church guy. <laughs> you don't have to. Come on. <laughs> so let's go. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's up, people? This is. Apparently, I'm told it's Jiba, but I, I've been saying it Jiba, so I keep on saying Jiba. <laughs> I am right until proven right. So I'm representing the science and, you know, the secularists, the atheists, and the agnostics. Hi, my name is Louis Israel, and uh, I'm the church guy. I'm representing Christianity. Yes. Um, I think I think it is. I think the church has been doing enough, and I think that it's still doing enough up until now. No, it's not. Uh, the, the church. There was a study that was. Uh, a survey, a recent survey revealed that churches are the least contributors of uh, human welfare when it comes to combating the COVID-19. Uh, it was actually published. I'll leave the link on the bio concerning the same study. So, uh, uh, even with people having been given like the green sign in Kenya to go on with services and all that, a recent study has also shown that very few people are actually back in the churches. People are, I think people are more afraid of COVID uh, than they are uh, attracted to God in the church. So there are actually less people and churches that usually had around 500 members in the congregation are reporting 20s and 30s, which is very worrying. And also when it comes to giving handouts and all that stuff, actually the church is asking instead of giving. We have heard of pastors crying for handouts. Just pray. <laughs> okay, the reason why I say that the church is is doing, uh, at least it's doing something, is um, I know of so many churches, you know, uh, who have been of so much help uh, to families who are in need, to needy families, to needy people who are in, who are in need. I know of one church in Nairobi. Um, I know of a guy, a friend of mine named Bethu. Shout out, by the way. Um, this guy has been helping people. He's been he's been reaching out to people who need who need help, and he's been he's been out there and asking people uh, who need help to come out. And I think that has been really something that he has done. Another church in Tika has been doing the same. So the pastor took uh, some of the members who are corporate, some of them who are working, na akawambia akawapatia like responsibilities. Now let's say that you're working, right? And you, you are a believer. Let's use that for now. <laughs> now, <laughs> you're a believer and you're working in this church. Now, the pastor says, now listen, you're going, you're going to be, you're going to be taking care of me, who is not working. So now, if I have any needs, I come to you. If my, if my, if my family needs uh, maybe wheat flour or anything like that, I come to you because you're working. So the pastor has come up with, with this, with this idea of uh, using the corporate members to help. The, the other members of the congregation which which are which are not so so able or who are who are, who are, who are needy yeah so i think that the church is actually doing something in, uh, to help about the same i i acknowledge that there are doctors in, or medical practitioners who profess certain faiths it's it's allowed, right? Because faith is personal and all that. But um, 
if they are developing the vaccine, it's despite their religious beliefs. It's science one on one way, and their belief system on the other side. So if 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 at all I'm a doctor and I want to develop a vaccine, I have to put my faith aside and look for something that will work. An experiment if it's a vaccine. Then if I produce a vaccine, maybe I'll give credit to God. I don't know if I was a scientist, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> if I was a scientist who believed. But uh, on the conspiracy theories that come, this, this, these things are brought about by believers. You've never heard of a scientist or, or a non-believer going like, this is the mark of the beast. And all that. Those, those are concepts that are, are brought about by believers, a sec- section of believers who think for some weird reason that Every science is devilish, de- demonic, and all that devilish and stuff. I, I think people should just understand that if, if at all God existed, He would have wished us to get vaccines, which He does, right? <laughs> which He does. <doesn't. laughs> if, if, if He existed, if He existed, or, or rather, He would have wished that if we, we get the vaccine. And um, yeah, if these other things about birth control and all that, these are human concepts. They have nothing to do with the gods of lack of them. Yeah, I'll say the same thing. These are human concepts. Uh, whoever says the vaccines are the, the, is the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is genuine. If you read the Bible very carefully, and uh, if, you, if you begin to unravel the eschatological teachings of Jesus, you see that the mark of the beast cannot come before the Antichrist comes. So we do not have an antichrist right now. So there is no way the mark of the beast can come before the antichrist comes. So the vaccine, if there is any vaccine out there and it's, it's, it's just being injected anywhere, I wouldn't refuse it for my kid to have to, to, to have uh, the vaccine just because at it, there, is, there is the mark of the beast out there, which is actually not there right now. Yeah. We are doing one thing. These things are <laughs> false. <laughs> Surprising me. <laughs> It's even evidence that prayer does not work because if, if at all prayer works, I think the COVID-19 has actually brought together more prayers than even cancer did pre-coronavirus because now everyone is focusing on the COVID-19 pandemic and people are forgetting there are their, their other pandemics that have existed, they have been, people have been faced by pestilence, war, diseases have existed since time immemorial but now because this disease, certain disease is threatening the the whole of mankind. That's why we have so much people putting together their prayers and even proving even more that prayers do not work. But uh, I think what everyone is waiting for is for the scientists to discover a vaccine or a cure for the COVID-19. Then the pastors can call back the congrega- congregants. Congregants. <laughs> <laughs> call back their members, the members of the congregations, and thank God for the vaccination. I mean, because he gave them the wisdom to manufacture the vaccine to begin with, don't you think? Well, tell that to a six year, <laughs> six years in uh, in medical school, uh, like, couple that with the lecturer strikes in like, in Kenya, and you'll find that the average doctor in Kenya studies for around eight years. So if if I go to college for eight years, then you thank God after I cure you. Rude, very rude. <laughs> Very rude. <laughs> Very rude of you, sir. So I want to say I want to say that God is good and that it is his nature to be good. There is no evil that is found in God. It is his intrinsic value to be good. So now we cannot pin all the evil that is happening on God because God created a perfect world. He created a very perfect uh, a very perfect world. We on the other hand, were well, actually the ones who corrupted everything. So now, when sin entered into the world, it corrupted everything. So now we see all these wars, like you said, all these all these pestilences, the diseases, and uh, even the coronavirus is a result of the corruption of the sin. So this is not actually God's fault, and uh, pinning it on God uh, is not okay. God is good, and there's, there's, there's no evil in Him. I'll say this, and I'll say it time and again. Now, God, uh, the children of Israel, they were praying for God to rescue them for how many years? 400 years, right? And he, he was just there. He rescued them, yes, in the end. I was going to say that God has a plan for all of us. And in the grand design, 
he knows everybody and he knows uh, how we're going to end up. He knows whether I'm going to die of COVID-19, which I pray that I would. <laughs> and I also know, he also knows uh, if, this, if this disease is even going to end at all. He knows everything, right? So now he is playing a, a, a very major role in ensuring that this actually ends. So the prayers actually, actually, they, they work because for me, this is not the first time that I have I've prayed for something and it's delayed. Just because something has been delayed does not mean that it has been denied. And and do not come at me with that. Uh, justice, justice delayed, delayed uh, is justice this is denied. denied. It's, 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 uh, <laughs> because it's this is this is not justice. It's 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 just for you. First of all, it was just for you to to go to hell. It was just for me to for, for somebody like me to go to hell. But because of his kindness, because of his mercy, he chose. Okay, what I mean, who him say, I go to heaven. You see. So now it's it's not even my right to go to heaven. It's it's not something I can I can claim that he, this is something I have worked for. This is something that God has given us. And whether or not He chooses to he chooses to rescue rescue us, I want us to I want to challenge all the Christians out there. Let us be like the the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. These boys they they, they they were about to be thrown into the fire. Now I can be on a King Nebuchadnezzar. If you do not worship the, the idol that I have set up, then I'm going to throw you into the fire. You know what these boys did? They said, if you throw us into the fire, God is going to rescue us. And even if he doesn't, we are not going to we are not going to worship you. Like you're not going to bow down to the to the to the idol. So whether or not God is going to rescue us or whether or not this COVID-19 is going to end, let us remain let us remain faithful and let us remain watching on, on God's promises because how many of God's promises have, have, have come true in our lives? Like, let us continue riding on the faithfulness of God, not even on our own faithfulness, but on the faithfulness of God. Yeah, that's a long sermon. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have, I have no response. Okay. To respond. I have a lot of issues with whatever you said. <laughs> First of all, God cannot be good because. Uh, Oh, man. God, 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 God himself says that he creates is the source of everything, right? Yes. He makes day, makes night, makes good, makes bad. He's the source. He even created the devil. What are we talking about here? Mm-hmm. So that's one, one thing where God cannot be good. And um, I'll just say this. I, I've had Christians most, mostly telling me that if God is good and uh, Children are dying, or rather people are dying of COVID-19. Then that is his goodness. That is the definition of his goodness. So our definition of goodness is distorted. It beats logic. The, the truth is, people rationalize very weird things and make them logical simply by throwing in the, the God concept here. If I was to tell uh, my son that I'm going to kill him tonight because I had voices in my head, you it would seem I would be thrown into a jail. <laughs> I'd be called a schizophrenic. Yeah, that's true. But uh, Abraham did so, and he's the father of faith. So <laughs> faith, faith makes people rationalize things that are rather very awkward, like throwing yourself into a furnace of fire or, or into a den of lions. So it, it, with this COVID-19 situation, there was a pastor in Meru who, who said that. You would like to be taken to where this coronavirus is coming from because it's the power of God, right? Remember Pastor Samuel? What happened? The, the church was closed, the government told him, oh no, no, we cannot allow you to do this. Because we have advanced, we have realized that these things do not work, bro. How many bishops have died in Rome from the COVID-19? Right? The holy city. Yeah. Right? So, simply because God is not talking to us does not mean that he is waiting to talk to us at a later time. He is simply not there, or if he is there, he doesn't give up an F about anything. So, guys, just embrace science, and you realize when you when you embrace science and humanism and all that, you stop thinking so much about yourself and you start thinking about humanity as, as as a whole. You stop being so selfish. You stop praying to yourself. You start helping those you don't have. You don't think that you are lucky because you did not die in Lebanese the other day. You you just know that it's chance and. It could have been you. It could have been. It could have been. It could have been you. So yes. 
you just appreciate life more and you don't say thank you because I have not died. No, that's very rude. That's assuming that God takes sides and that God prefers you to the other person. Weird. So please, wear a mask. <laughs> Which was manufactured by, the, by a scientist. No one was no no one was prepared for the pandemic. Or except, who was given him? Except Bill Gates. Bill Gates had a had an idea of whatever was to come. He, he, he had spoken about the same if you followed on Bill and Melinda Gates. Yes. He had warned humanity of a forecoming pandemic, which is basically a logical thing. It's not a faith thing. You don't have faith that you're going to crash when you bought a car. Rather, you reason that it's a plausible case. You could crash when you when you bought a car, right? Yeah. That's not faith. That's purely logic, right? So, so Bill Gates had studied the past, right? Over the past years, this is not the first time a virus is attacking or rather threatening to end mankind. It's actually not the first yeah. corona. It's not the first. Case. It's not even the first coronavirus uh, strain, yeah. right? That's why it's called the COVID-19 because of the yes. other coronaviruses, the SRS types of viruses. And there was the, the swine flu, the, the other flu, there was the one in 1918 where a lot of people died. But I, I, I think the reason there's so much panic in the world right now is because of information overflow. We've advanced technologically. Everyone can see the statistics from their television, from their phone. Uh, you can see videos of people dying in the streets. You can see images. And that's why there's a lot of pa- panic on the same, yeah? Did I just say pa? <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, the, the reason people are panicking is because there's a lot of information. And, you know, with a lot of information comes a lot of false information on the same. Yeah. A lot of, you know, conspiracies, you know. And, uh, but I, I think the person that has logic will be at, it will be at a higher position to say avoid contracting the virus than a person of faith, right? Because logic tells you that this virus is contracted through contact through the mouth uh, or this whatever these ones are called, the mouth, the uh, nose, the eyes. So you should wear a mask, wash your hands and all that. But a faith person will tell you that this thing was brought about by the devil, you should pray about it. <laughs> Ridiculous. But I, I, I have seen a f- very few people of faith who apply logic and it works when they wear masks like Rish, yeah. <laughs> so if you're logical, you're, you're more likely not to contract the virus and therefore more likely not to die. You know you can be a faith-based person and still have some logic. Some. Yeah, you can agree on that. So. Yes, it's possible. Because why would I want to? First of all, the Bible says respect authority. Yeah, right. Sure. Now, if the government tells us to wear masks and stay away from from people who are infected, uh, or keep a, a social a, a, <laughs> keep social distance. Now, why would I, as a Christian, want to uh, go against the government? Now, I, I I refuse to. To put on the mask or to abide by the government's uh, uh, regulations, uh, alafu, I expect that God is going to heal me somehow. Never. You see, mm-hmm. so God has actually given us those leaders. He has given us. He has given us wisdom. He has given us a brain to think. There is no way you can expect that he, you've been told, hey, if you do this. You're going to if you if you do not put on a mask, you're going to to contract the coronavirus disease, and you're going to you're going to die. And then you you out of your your, your own arrogance, after see see mambo na kukuwa na na faith there, it's it's just arrogance. You go out and you don't have you do not have a mask. And then when you now when you now contract the disease, you again now start uh, asking for God's for God's mercy and intervention. Well, alikuwa mikupatia the wisdom to know, hey, if the government says put on a mask, it's helpful, please do that. Because I've said respect authority. So God is for the authority. So now, whatever the authority, the government of Kenya, of the Republic of Kenya, tells us to do, we're going to do that. We're going to do exactly that, regardless of our faith. Thank you so much for watching and...
staying tuned and just being part of this conversation don't forget to continue with this conversation on the comment section come up and you never stopped commenting about the anti-natalism yes anti-natalism conversation <laughs> and this conversation will not end and i was the moderator of this issue of this conversation and i think you can't have faith and logic are interdependent the reason why we have logic or because we have some questions is because we've asked them and we've not found answers and that's why we choose either to be of faith or of logic but i i don't believe that someone can you know exist without both so thank you so much for being with us subscribe like share and leave a comment i don't think we're going to do this in two parts because it's just a very hot conversation so thank you so much um i want to thank gere this <laughs> word i've never known how to mention it say it get a nook studios subscribe or i will eat your babies <laughs> speaking of hot <laughs> i'm kidding <laughs> as hot as hell <laughs> As hot as hell. Yes, and thank you to Israel. Rudolph. Yeah, thank you. For... His name is very yeah. peculiar for this conversation. Anyway, at our young, it's very peculiar. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much for for being with us. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and everything you need in top of the description box. Thank you. I also want to shout out my friend Deborah Karego. You can shout out. Shout out. Goodbye. Say bye. Mwah.